welcome to World Insight. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi has met with U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken on the sidelines of the G20 Foreign Ministers meeting in Bali, Indonesia. It's their first in-person meeting since October. They had what's billed as an in-depth and candid conversation over China-U.S. relations on top of international and regional issues of common concern. Both sides agreed the dialogue was substantive and constructive, a step toward a better mutual understanding. The meeting was seen to ease risks of miscalculation and to pave the way for future high-level exchanges between the two countries. Putting diplomatic jargons aside, what exactly is the content of this meeting? What does it really mean for the current deteriorating China-U.S. relations? On that, I invited these two guests. I'm glad to be joined in Maine, Susan Thornton, senior fellow at the Paul Tsai China Center for Yale Law School, who's also the former acting assistant secretary of the United States Department of, uh, for East Asia and also Pacific Affairs. In Beijing, Jia Qingguo, professor from the School of International Studies from Peking University. Uh, welcome to the program. Uh, five hours talk, both sides suggested it is comprehensive in depth. Now, uh, Susan, your latest take. Yeah, so I think this meeting between Secretary of State Tony Blinken and Foreign Minister and State Councillor Wang Yi was, was really a good step forward. First of all, it was in the um, environment of the G20, which is a very important sort of mechanism and architecture for addressing global problems. And I think the two were able on the sidelines of that kind of a meeting to really address serious substantive issues. Five hours of, of private talks is definitely uh, significant. And both sides said it was constructive, which is very good. Mm. Professor Jia, both sides seem to have some specific content, uh, even in their public statement. How do you see the two sides might be comparing each other's lists? Well, it's very important uh, for them to uh, exchange uh, views and also exchange a list of uh, wishes <laughs> or demands. I, I think there are a lot of differences, uh, certainly, but uh, it, it's important uh, also to note that uh, there are a lot of uh, shared interests uh, mm. and shared concerns. This, of course, uh, is a meeting taking place on the sideline of a multilateral platform, G20. So there are things that the two talk about that are global, uh, and there are things that are more bilateral. Let's talk about the bilateral first, the uh, tariffs. How much do you see, uh, really, the discussion will help uh, to speed up this process and also the depth of uh, uh, the cutting of tariffs uh, between China and the United States? I think it's clear to most people that the tariffs are hurting U.S. consumers and U.S. businesses as much as or more than they're hurting China. And the question is how to, you know, do it, not whether it's the right thing to, to roll them back. So mm. um, it's a politically difficult issue because there are certain constituencies in the U.S. that support certain aspects of the tariffs. And so I think that it's a kind of a matter of tactically how to do it. Um, working on getting rid of the tariffs should be something that U.S. and China work toward, but we should also at the same time work toward, you know, resolving some of the longstanding irritants in the economic and trade relationship, which I think both sides would be willing to do in the context of tariff rollbacks. You know, there are a number of things, cloud services, for example, and there are a number of things in the financial area that have actually been moving forward and I think we could do more on. So there, I think there are things that would be you know, beneficial to both sides to move ahead on. Mm -hmm. We've kind of been stuck on the conversation on economics for the last several years over the tariffs. Uh, Professor Jia, on the issues of tariffs, how much uh, in-depth do you see it is taking place right now? And uh, how much do you see uh, the, uh, you know, uh, the, the level of patience that has to be exercised, particularly from the Chinese side? Well, I think the uh, lifting tariffs is uh, long overdue. I think it's uh, uh, time to do it, to, to lift it as soon as possible. There are many other issues that we have in our relationship. 
Uh, but uh, these issues can be discussed uh, uh, separately. Uh, I think uh, uh, I agree with Susan that uh, more reciprocal arrangements should be made uh, on, in terms of uh, uh, openness to uh, the other side. Uh, they should not be linked with uh, the tariffs because uh, uh, they only uh, dragged uh, the, the process of lifting tariffs. <laughs> it cannot solve the problem. You know, people to people exchanges, of course, uh, is very much uh, at the center of the uh, statement coming out of the Chinese side uh, after the exchanges between the two foreign ministers. So Professor Jia, how do you see uh, China's emphasis on this, at least in the open statement? Well, it's nice to talk about people to people exchange. Uh, and also, it's important. It's it's very good uh, way to uh, shape the relationship. Uh, but the problem is how to put it into practice. Well, I think it's really hard, actually, Tenway, to overestimate the negative impact on U.S.-China relations that has come <laughs> from the COVID nineteen pandemic and all of the, you know, problems in traveling back and forth. Um, you know, students who couldn't go to classes with their classmates, uh, you know, all kinds of trips canceled, business people having trouble traveling to oversee their businesses. And so I really feel like we've got to nor re-normalize our uh, back and forth traffic between our two peoples. So, you know, getting, getting back to normal on people to people exchange as soon as possible is something I think is absolutely necessary. Ms. Sorton, what, what does it take for the two sides to manage their differences smartly? Um, I think those are obvious areas and whether we can push forward on some concrete actions in those areas. Um, I think the tariffs would be a good uh, first step, but obviously there's things that need to be done urgently on climate change, um, either in parallel or together, and we should be working on those uh, vociferously. And then on public health, there's a lot of things that are out there and that we used to have very good cooperation on that was disrupted with the COVID-19 pandemic, and we should get back to that. Mm. There are a lot of things that can be done, but uh, uh, we have seen uh, the two sides, at least the, some people from two sides, uh, concentrating so much of their attention on the competition, if not uh, uh, rivalry process, uh, rather than focusing their attention and energy on the cooperation and the global issues. Uh, how much do you see that with the current political environment that's likely to change? I do think that we, we see, tend to see a pattern in U.S.-China relations where uh, things get bad and then both sides all of a sudden realize the need for the two of them to work together and then somehow we can we can uh, turn the narrative in a in a po more positive direction. In reality, it's very difficult uh, as, uh, at the moment. Uh, you know, actually, in the foreseeable future, we are facing uh, great difficulties. Uh, for example, the U.S. is going to have midterm election. Uh, the results are not going to be. Uh, in favor of China-U.S. relations, <laughs> my guess is. <laughs> and, and also, uh, uh, in China, we are going to have a 20-party Congress, and, and there are people who want to show toughness. Uh, so uh, you have uh, the political dynamics going on in the, in the days to come. So, there, you know, one thing the two countries probably need to do is not to uh, uh, let domestic political considerations overwhelm the need uh, to engage each other and to mm. work together on shared interests. You know, we have been reflecting so much about Nixon's visit, about, uh, you know, Dr. Henry Kissinger's achievement, about the uh, decades of relationship between China and the United States, at least from the Chinese side over the past uh, two years or three. Um, so now my question really is, uh, in order for things to get, quote unquote, better uh, so that the two sides uh, sh shoulder their responsibilities for themselves, for each other, and also for the world. Will there be a way to uh, 
incrementally implement or achieve that, or it has to be a, a smart move, a move of huge political wisdom like what they did 50 years ago for the normalization of relations between China and the United States. What does it take from your side, from, from your perspective? Well, there's another alternative, um, I suppose, to the two that you mentioned, which yeah. is that we could have a big crisis and that would cause people to all of a sudden uh, be shocked into understanding that the two sides need to work together. And I think um, that is, of course, a possibility we wouldn't like to see and that we think that our leaders should be wise enough to um, head off and and turn to either the incremental way of doing it or the brilliant stroke way of doing it. I mean, I do think that we need to be communicating more than ever now because of that complexity. You know, in the US, um, the idea of many dialogues with China has gone out of fashion as people thought that it was a lot of resources invested and not a lot of output from those discussions. But I just think in the complex world that we're living in, uh, where the U.S. and China are big players on almost every issue. We need to be talking about uh, things like emerging technologies, um, you know, other things like yeah. arms control, crisis management, and certainly the kind of order that we want to see in the world. Because, I mean, whether, um, you know, the U.S. is the hegemon or whether it's China that's striding the globe as the new global power, uh, we're both going to have to live in this world together, and we need to make sure that we understand uh, the intentions of the other and how we see things going forward. Incremental steps, brilliant strokes, or a, a huge uh, crisis. Uh, Professor Jia, which do you think that would lead us to a, a better outcome? I, I think uh, we need probably both a uh, brilliant stroke and uh, incremental steps uh, to work on the relationship. Uh, we cannot expect the re repetition of uh, the brilliant stroke of the 1970s uh, uh, because uh, uh, the relationship is very diff different and also the uh, situation of the two countries are very different. It, are China, US stakeholders of the same international order? Okay. Should they work together to improve global governance uh, on these big questions. I think they, we should have consensus on, on at the leadership level. And then at the step-step, uh, <laughs> you know, tactical level, you know, policy level, uh, you know, we should focus on specific issues and try to tackle them with them. One by one, we can yeah. uh, improve the relationship. But that, of course, takes time. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, both of you. I really appreciate uh, the friendship from both of you, not only being intellectual on this platform, but also being great uh, uh, partners for dialogue uh, with one another. Thank you so much.